So I am currently working on the uh, elevator and you can see that previously there was a little bit of rubbing so it was a little too close to the skin. So I pulled this out, re-inspected it and added a very, very thin piece of aluminum washer. And now you can see that we have just about the thickness of two pages of paper uh, between the, the servo horn and the skin. And so it is extremely, extremely tight in there. In terms of the horizontal alignment, it looks like the person that initially built this did a good job. So you can see that that, this, and the center of these are properly lined. So uh, the only thing I needed to do here was add some um, dry lube to these bearings, both on the, on the outside bearing and on the inside bearing. I added a little bit of dry lube uh, in the top, top and bottom portions of, of that locking mechanism that you can see moving. So right around uh, right here and right there just so that I can get that to be more fluid in the movement and I think that's good and then that bearing up there as well so when I move this up there's a bearing in there I lubed that with a BVM dry lube as well um, so I'm just gonna again clean this also with 1500 grit just a little bit because I can see just some blemishes in there and then BVM lube and insert it in there and make sure that it comes in and out fairly smoothly. So one more word on the elevators. So what I wound up figuring out is initially the way these have been shimmed and worked on, they were a little bit tight to um, get into the spot right here. And there's a latch mechanism on the bottom here that you click. And that just felt a little too tight for me because it felt like I had to use a lot more force to actually get that lock to engage. And what happened uh, to be the issue was that as this stabulator is sitting um, sort of in in its slot here, this, uh, this servo arm kind of sticks out uh, depending on where it is. And so it was just pushing up against uh, the skin here a little bit. So what I had to do is just grind out just a little bit of material to just give that uh, servo head room to fit and um, now that actually plugs in just fine. So. Okay, so now to install this we stick this in the hole We get to the end point and then we have to engage the latch on the bottom push that through and then you hear that positive click and that tells me that the latch mechanism is engaged and this is not going anywhere. And so when we look at the movement, it's perfect. There's no um, binding anywhere on there. Let's see if we can zoom into here. So you see the servo arm there and it actually has perfect movement now and barely just comes really close to the skin of the of the elevator right here but it doesn't interfere at all. So I'm happy with that and I did that on uh, both the stabulator or elevators and so they click with a nice positive click when they're inserted and they get the full range of movement. Uh, that's what the elevator on the right side looks when it's locked and that's what it looks like when it's unlocked. So, pretty happy with that. So I've been sitting here racking my brain trying to figure out how I wanted to do the wiring harness for the elevator servos and the reason is because when and if these servos ever need to be replaced um, it's going to be a lot of work if this is not done correctly so um, the turbine sits uh, in in 
uh, in this section right here on, on the F14. And the pipe and uh, all that stuff is kind of in the way. So I have to make sure that when I install the servo, that it's easy to get to the plug and replace it if that ever needs to be done. And the question was, how do I do that? Well, because it didn't seem like there's a lot of room in here and I didn't want to have that connector or the harness um, get stuck, you know, somewhere in here in the middle of the fuselage because that would be a real pain to fix. But I think I came up with a solution and I'm going to show that to you now. So, uh, in the jet itself, let me see if I can turn this. Uh, there is a nice amount of space right in this area. Let's zoom into that. So right in this area here. Uh, so the servo sits in, in the block and obviously you can see if I put my, my uh, wrench there, you can see that behind the wrench in this area there's, there's some space. So what I had to do was um, cut down the servo lead. So if I trim the servo lead so it's nice and short, not too short because I want to have enough access so that if this is pulled out there's enough wire to work with. Uh, so I cut that short and so it's about I'd say maybe three or four inches in length now uh, and this is the wiring harness that I'm gonna be making but if I do that and then I added just some small notches in here so you can see I rounded the section here and created a notch in here and created a notch up here. Um, and the reason for that is so now this gets held up and that servo connection sits right there and it doesn't obscure the servo at all because you can see the wall of the servo um, just sits up against um, this plywood piece and that way I can have my harness sit in here the wire gets maneuvered into there And bam. So with that arrangement there, I'm really proud of that because then what that means is that your servo connection sitting there it doesn't interfere with the servo at all. But now replacing this is really easy. And then I can just like make my harness fixed all the way from here to the front because all that you need to access the servo connection is sitting right in that pocket. I'm really happy with that, how that came out, just utilizing that tiny pocket in here to store the, the servo connection. Back on the F14 and just about to um, do the harnessing for the uh, vertical st uh, stabilizers or the rudder. And one of the first things to do is check that those four uh, screws or bolts up there are tight because this kit's been sitting for a while. So I did that, those are nice and tight and we're going to drill a hole right through the top here for the wires to go in. Just drilled a 9mm hole in here and I added a grommet and the idea is the wire is going to go in through here and the connector is just going to sit up top just like that. That should actually sit um, perfectly aligned with this with this hole and not interfere with the with the grommets in here so this should just get plugged in like that and this all um, will sit there just so fine. I have about uh, four foot of wire here this is the power box premium wire um, and since this is gonna be in the hot section back here I'm gonna encase that in the fiberglass sleeve that you see here and just a quick tip is so usually when you cut these, they want to fray um, on, on, the, on the back, sort of like this. And so what I do to get a clean cut is just douse that in CA and let those fibers, um, let those fibers soak the CA in. It'll become hard. Just hit it with some kicker and then just get your scissors and cut it. And you get a very nice and clean um, cut. And so now we're going to put that in here. We're going to get some heat shrink with the adhesive and we're going to put that on there and then this now becomes the harness for the rudder and that's going to go into the grommet here and the grommet is sized so that this will stick out um, just okay, like so that. So here's a completed hot section of the uh, vertical stab harness. So we've got heat shrink, your connector, 
and then heat shrink just to keep the uh, heat protective covering there and then the rest of the harness the end result heat insulated pulled all the way to the front you can see that here and this is going to be the hot section right okay. here so the only thing i had to do here was um i shortened this uh servo lead just because it was uh a bit too long um, so i cut off about half a foot maybe eight inches um the reason for that is um, I just don't like to have unnecessarily long wires, okay, so, so I try to keep this as short as possible. I just don't want unnecessary inductance in the wire. So we're going to cut that down, um, but the key obviously is when you do something like that, that your crimps have to be very, very well done. Um, and so I'm pretty happy with, with my crimping here. Um, and you can see, let's see if that shows up. Yeah, so you grab the jacket there, the wire, and then the rest of the wire is pretty well crimped so that's going to be a very solid connection so here's a shot of uh, the completed product um, all I did was plug the servo in add a retaining clip and then we're gonna test fit that make sure that this actually works as intended that uh, mating process was pretty easy and we're done. This front section, we're going to use an M3 by 12 and you can see, I just put the screw through the top and you can see how much thread there is, so we should be getting a pretty good bite uh, into the um, receiving thread that's so in here. Here's a shot of the rudder, so in here I put an M3, uh, the reason I used a pan head instead of the beefier head is because the pan head takes a two millimeter uh, wrench which fits really well with this access hole from the outside i found that a 2.5 wrench is a little bit tight so um, that's why i went with that m3 size in here now i added this lock nut here and this uh, coupler here is threaded the only reason for this lock nut is so that we don't lose this uh, M3 screw so when I give this to to its owner if they need to take off the vertical stab they can unscrew this and they feel some pressure stop and that will already loosen um, this clamp here but not allow the M3 screw to fall out um, and as you can see we have both fiberglass shielding on the wires and then in addition to that we have attached the aluminum tape so those wires the server wires running under there will be sufficiently protected against uh, story on the other side of uh, the jet um, so this is the left side very similar All set right. so we're gonna move the surfaces and see that they work So the rudder seems to be good. Put a torque on those. Okay. mention here is that you see this silver uh, uh, aluminum tape and it's on both sides of the jet and what that is um, is I just pre-wired the wires for the afterburner in case um, the owner of this jet actually wants to put one because getting back here pulling out the pipes and pulling out the turbines is gonna be a lot of work so what I figured I'd do is for something like the afterburner, which should be easy to add, I just put wires in there. So there's four wires in here, and the case that I used was a Unilite, which has a light and a boost. And so if the owner wants to add afterburner, all you need to do is pull out the nose cones, lift the, the pipe a little bit up, and then you have access to your wires. If you peel the, peel the tape, 
right in here there's going to be your four wires and you can just attach those to your afterburner and that wiring will be done but just some of the things that i try to do to sort of make uh this easier for the person that it's going to go to